Okay, welcome to this new session of talks of the academic tracks. Today we'll have three talks. The rules for the speakers are 20 minutes talks, five minutes question, and five minutes for moving. So I ask you please to stay in the times. I present myself, I'm Daniel Oxoli, I'm a researcher at Politecnico di Milano, working in GIS, and now I'm glad to leave the stage to Dr. Ostada Bas, that present in database transformation, cadastral data, processing QGIS, and implementation in WebGIS. So, please. So, uh, hello ladies and gentlemen. I wish you a good morning and good start for this season. Uh, my topic is related to the database transformation, CADAS data processing in QGIS and implementation in the WebGIS. The following work was carried out in cooperation with the University of Applied Science in Stuttgart and uh, the Stig uh, Company and uh, Dr. Koch Company, uh, which is the, uh, the other firm for the DSTIG. DSTIG is the well-known uh, company in southwest of the Germany and uh, who are dominated in the city planning and city development. Dr. Koch is a sub-company of the STIG and works in the field of the evaluation of the real estate in the larger scales, uh, which means evaluation of the whole city uh, quarter or industrial area and moreover evaluation of the so-called land standard values. This will be a topic or link for the following project. So the structure of this uh, presentation uh, is introduction, methodology of processing the CADAS data, uh, QGIS and semi-automatic map creation, WebGIS and uh, conclusion and further research. So, as uh, you know that uh, company is uh, located in the Germany, so uh, we are following the uh, German uh, rules, German law. German building law uh, represent a significant law and tool set uh, regarding uh, planning, building, and has influence on the shape, structure, and development of the municipalities. According to the Rule 196, uh, the land standard values have to be derived and published by the Real Estate Value Advisory Committees. The land standard values are the values given the euro per square meter, uh, for the homogeneous spatial zone, uh, like a residential, industrial, and the combination of the residential and uh, uh, industrial area, and uh, derive mainly of the basis of the collection of the purchasing price in the municipality. As you can see in the figure, uh, here we have, uh, we have you know, some uh, uh, homogeneous spatial zones like here, this one and this one, which will be uh, highlighted by the pink color. Uh, this uh, number states for the you know price for the uh, one parcel, unconstructed uh, constructed parcel inside this zone, and uh, this B stand uh, for the development condition, and it, uh, this kind of you know. Uh, information has been uh, decided by the city planners uh, in the company. And uh, this is the zone number, which is the identical for each zone. And uh, another letter here is W standing for the uh, residential area. Uh, this is the German expert, you know, German letters. And uh, the next one is the f floor space index. So, some introduction. The databases uh, for the derivation of the land standard values are the official CADAS data, uh, which, which is the ALKIS data. And this, uh, this data consists more than 200 layers. For creating the map that I show you, uh, needs huge manual steps, uh, for, like uh, geocoding of the uh, purchasing price, selecting, aggregating, and, uh, and categorizing the data, it's, it would take time, you know, and it, this procedure is really time and cost intensive. And the aim of this project is, you know, 
migration or jumping from the uh, commercial or closed source uh, GIS to the open source GIS and uh, taking advantage of the open source special database PostgreSQL and QGIS server and Liz Map Web Client to visualizing in the web. As you can see, there is a methodology of this uh, project. Uh, we have the, some uh, basic data sets and data precision and result of the analysis. In the basic data set, we, we have the Alkis data. This is the CADAS data uh, based on the XML format. And uh, in, we have the urban land use plan, like a local plan, uh, informal planning, like an urban development concept. And uh, for the other relevant geodata, uh, for taking that kind of uh, values, we will use the uh, DEM digital elevation model <coughs> and digital orthovodos. But in um, some cases, it's, this kind of uh, data is not available just for some big cities. And the most important parameter to, to uh, derive the value, the land standard value, is the purchasing price of the undeveloped sites in relation to the land parcel number and the addresses. So, this is the data sets. And uh, we need to have the data processing, data processing. So, uh, by using the uh, my, uh, migration of the XML data, selecting and aggregating of the CADAS object classes like a building, and detection of the type and degree of the building and land use, and delineation of the uh, slope inclination and aspect and other rele uh, relevant areas. So, uh, and for the purchasing uh, prices, we need to have the geocoding, uh, geocoding of the purchasing price for the corresponding land, uh, land parcel and the addresses. So, by taking, uh, you know, by consideration this kind of uh, input data and data set and uh, procedure, the expert in the company, in the city planning, will decide about the zones, uh, which, which uh, parcel are, you know, uh, are, has a homogeneous, special, related, and can have the, you know, the same value. Uh, this part, after you know, uh, the city planners will do in the, in the map, in the paper, this is the kind of you know, semi-automatic part of the, for the digitizing the, this map in the QGIS and uh, giving the attribute uh, to the uh, polygons that we create. And the final step is the, you know, the uh, publishing in the web. So, as I want to divide my project into uh, three, diff uh, three important uh, aspects, the first part is that you know to dealing to uh, data preparation in the uh, database? So uh, we are using the uh, Norbit uh, extension from the OSGO for W for the Windows environment to import the uh, raw uh, Alkis data to the PostgreSQL PostGIS. And uh, so this kind of we, as I told you, we have more than 200 layers. It's, uh, in some cases, it's 212, 213. Uh, we, we must provide this kind of data. Uh, we have a sample here. Uh, for example, this one, we have the AP underlined PTO layers, in, which contains the street name and a, a street uh, geometry. But you must, uh, there is no visible uh, f for this uh, street name. You must uh, derive this kind of information uh, from uh, this layer by really simple or basic uh, SQL code, but very eff effective to create the street name. Uh, it, some expression is uh, in a German language, but if you have any question, uh, I will explain to you later on. And uh, for the parcel number, this parcel number, which is uh, which be connected to the purchasing price later on, uh, we, we must create the uh, parcel number by really simple, uh, another simple SQL code. And as you can see in the result in the map, uh, we have the uh, parcel number, which is unique for each uh, parcel. And here we have the uh, purchasing price as a sample, uh, which is, uh, visible in the red color. 
So the second uh, important part of uh, this project, you know, finishing the database layer preparation, and this is the uh, time for the visualizing in the uh, GIS desktop. Uh, as I told you, this is the point, uh, you know, to jump from the commercial to the open source by using the QGIS. Uh, this is just one uh, really small part of the code that uh, we uh, develop, you know, by, you know, uh, connection to the database and, you know, taking the uh, d data and uh, giving the size, uh, buffer, rotation, uh, as you can remember, in the previous slide, I, uh, for the for the each uh, point for the labeling, we need to have the uh, unique angle to be uh, rotated to be fit exactly in the street. So this is the this is the code, and this is the uh, final result. Just for this code, will be you know the street name exactly to be fitted in into the uh, street flow. So I would like to show you really short video of uh, creating uh, this project in the QGIS. By running the script here, you will have some algorithms and you know the map, the, uh, the, this map is uh, the one really a small city in the southwest of the Germany, which name is Deitziso. So uh, it would take, uh, it's not all because, you know, it would take around two minutes, three minutes to be completed for the labeling and, you know, the rotating of the label. And it's a little, so. So the second part is done, so Municipalities ask us to visualize, to publish this map into the web. So uh, previously, our company just asked, you know, some uh, some external company, to, you know, to publish this web, uh, this this map into the web in the internet. Uh, but uh, we could develop by ourselves by using by taking advantage from the uh, QGIS server and Lease Map web client. And uh, as you can see in the WebGIS architecture, we are starting from the PostgreSQL, connection, uh, connecting to the QGIS and uh, QGIS and QG, uh, QGIS uh, server. And uh, one really uh, great client, LizMap web client, uh, has functionality like uh, navigating, printing, uh, configuring the client surface and curing on the feature layer. Uh, and so many other functionalities, I, I will show you one sample. So this is the final result, uh, as you can see, which has the, you know, the company logo, uh, the title, and I will show you the live. Okay, uh, yes, I think yeah. it's a little complicated. If you go on the PowerPoint. Oh. It must be. Um, I, don't, I think you need to take this. Sorry. Come back with the mouse. On the other side. Okay. Maybe you, you just no, close. No, oh, this is no, another yeah, presentation. Yeah, here. Yeah, the point is I need to move this. <coughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That's nice. Okay. Okay. So, and as you can see, you know, uh, we have, this is the, you know, the link. Everybody can access uh, to this link. And, uh, you know, we have a uh, different functionality uh, here, and the most important one uh, is the 
kind of you know address searching you know and finding the parcel number we have uh, for example we can try here uh, parcel number 25 so and we will go exactly to this uh, parcel and uh, you know we uh, configured we developed this uh, pop-up configuration for that for example here we have the foolish number the address for this one and the uh, zone number the price and this is this uh, parcel is exactly inside this uh, zone and it will take the information from this zone and uh, this is whatever you will see here as a pop uh, pop up you know the information in in pop up information in in the map it must be exactly same like it, the label for each zone and we have other functionality in the list map web client uh, such as the legend you know layer uh, you know we can uh, just off or on and uh, another important things for the for the city planners uh, is the printing option so we defined a different scales you can you can choose the different scales but you know this kind of configuration will be done in the QGIS server and Lisma web client and uh, this is the sample if you go and we can you know save this as a, as a PDF so and uh, we have this option you know to uh, make off or on uh, to use the open street map which is uh, free we can just add into our uh, client and uh, some other option maybe th this is the logo for the municipalities this is the description for the for the labels and you know some other information related to the city planners the projection extent and so on so I will let it open maybe later on if there is a question. So I will continue with the, yes. So, yes. So we are in the uh, last part, conclusion and uh, further research. Uh, it was the you know the uh, description of the semi-automatic map creation uh, for the land standard value, which is right now really important in Germany, uh, because uh, right now municipality will decide, government will decide about you know the taxes for each parcel. So this project is kind of really important, and uh, it was it would help you know to save time and cost you know and uh, this this project is really open it it can be you know really optimized you know to be developed to be faster and uh, we can continue to the, the coding in for the layer preparation for the python uh, to to optimize even the digitizing process it's it's kind of you know difficult because uh, the lines the city planner that use they are not following just the you know the parcel border in some cases we would have some intersection this is the kind of you know uh, really difficult point and uh, later on we have this chance you know to visualize this map it, it, right now it's in the 2d and we can have the three dimension by using the uh, digital elevation model and building heights and so on thank you so much for attention I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for the nice presentation. We have plenty of room for questions. We'll save some minutes. So please, there are a question from the audience. Yeah. Hello, thank you. Uh, did you experience uh, some problems with symbology while moving from QGIS desktop to QGIS server? because it's also existing commercial projects like for ESRI. When you move from desktop to ArcGIS Online, there are certain symbology limitations. Did you experience some limitations with your Python-based uh, symbology? Thanks. It, was, it is a really good question. Actually, uh, 
the, the, the whole thesis hypothesis was related to the uh, comparison between the uh, ArcGIS Online and the QGIS server. Actually, I tried with the ArcGIS Online, but, and you know, I faced too many difficulties because you know it's kind of you know uh, difficult sim symbology labeling, and uh, you need to first you know convert uh, to the graphics, and in some cases, it's difficult to upload them in the ArcGIS Online. But the, the, the good things to use the QGIS server, you can upload the labels, the uh, category, or whatever you create in the QGIS desktop, you will see in the uh, web by using the Lisma web. This is the really great point of using, I, I didn't face any problem. But in some cases, we need to, you know, to, to develop a little. But you can, you can change to this. <laughs> OK, thank you. We are space for other questions. Yep. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed it. Uh, I came late. Uh, the, um, the colors in the map, yes. are those uh, parcel classifications? Uh, you, you mean? Yes, the colors are, uh, uh, you know, it depends. For example, this is the industrial area. Yep. This is the, you know, uh, combination of, uh, we have, uh, as maybe you can, it's around eight different colors. And, but, you know, mostly are, you know, the pink and the brown because the pink is assigned to the uh, residential area and M, is, which is the brown, is um, it's a mixed area okay. for the... Uh, industrial area and uh, residential area. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Other questions? I have questions. Uh, Just mm, last remark. If you have maybe, uh, you know, I'm not the uh, city planner, but if you have any question related to the how to get these values, you know, from the, you know, uh, city planners, architecture. I put some pens here, which the, the name of the uh, company is here, and you can you can just connect them or ask question or directly from my side. Okay, so now ju just just a brief question. As, yes. as the the problem of styling, as, as everybody knows, is quite tedious. On uh, did you share some code like for for the rendering of like the Python preprocessing you did? Those processing scripts are somewhere. And, you know, I think most of them it's possible to find in the in the, in the GitHub. You know, I, I use okay. them, but you know the uh, the kind of you know most tricky or most challenging part was the uh, rotation angle for each point. You know, it, it was kind of you know time consuming and. It's I think you, maybe I can upload this into the... I might be <laughs> usable because maybe someone can save a bit of time and improve over there. Yeah. So we know. Okay. Um, I actually have two questions. Yes. So if you... You said that uh, you got data that was not uh, topology topologically identical with uh, the parcels and so um, could you uh, make some interpolation or you have you you have just uh, first uh, corrected the topology of the original data that's one question and the, okay. the second one is um, I suppose um, the system in Germany is like uh, very experienced and everything is uh, in order, but is there uh, any flexibility for developing countries in your approach? And if it if there is not very flexible, what do you recommend to do so that uh, if um, uh, if uh, the system, if the archis like archis changes in time? Mm -hmm. uh, how can you make uh, your approach more flexible to adapt to to state requirements, <coughs> so to say? Thank you. And actually, I will start with the second question. Uh, you know, these three parts, database part, uh, QGIS part, and the web part is, you know, they are related, but they can be, you know, independent from each other. 
So it means, for example, if we have another raw data, so uh, actually we cannot use this, for example, nor bit extension to, to upload them. But I'm sure there is a too much uh, possibility to, uh, to upload the data in the, into the, the PostgreSQL. And after that, it's just, you know, uh, the code, the Python code in the QGIS is just reading the data and, you know, the, the function. And it doesn't matter this data is out of the Alkis data or not. So it means if we can upload the data for the new countries, I don't know, maybe for, I'm originally from Iran, maybe from Iran uh, data. Uh, so if we can upload this kind of data into the database, the other parts it's definitely can be you know assigned and the for, for the first question if i uh, got uh, correct uh, this you know each parcel uh, has you know uh, kind of you know we are not more, the data this alkis data are really accurate data you know Actually, we are we don't check you know the topological you know uh, relation between those, but you know the city planners you know using the, uh, the data preparation that I've done for them, and you know going to the field, you know to check to to how is the data going you know uh, this this part is kind of you know related to the city planner and architecture you know to see what is happening you know I haven't been with them. But it seems like this. But if you have some kind of you know, more detailed question about this, you can contact them, or I will connect you with them to get your you know, really correct <laughs> answer. OK, thank you. We are perfect on time. So That's thank nice you so time. much. <laughs> and I invite you to stay for the next presentation. We have the five minutes if you need to change the room. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.